lovely people my name is Emma and today I'm going to be chatting about my June TBR. So in the UK June is Pride Month and I thought it'd be fun to focus on some of the LGBTQIA books that I have um, on my shelf that I need to read. So there's a sort of mix of fiction and non-fiction and then I have a couple of other books mainly pulled from yearly TBRs that I'm also going to be subbing in there um, and I will be putting out some uh, book recommendations around um, books in the sort of LGBT community um, and sort of fiction, non-fiction, things like that. So if you have any recommendations in particular that you, or like requests in particular that you want me to talk about, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and get them out for June. The first book is uh, Olivia Waits, The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics. And this is a uh, lesbian historical romance um, about two women. One of them is a widow. The other one I don't believe has ever been married, but has just watched um, her ex Lover get married and is in a bit of a bad place um, and then it has been enlisted to help translate some incredibly complicated text um, that the widower's late husband has um, and then they get closer and closer together I'm hoping it's gonna be really fun I've got it it says the back has like a star cross lovers vibe um, so I think this is gonna be uh, light-hearted entertaining and I love me a historical romance the next book is The Galaxy in the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. This is book four of the Wayfarer series, which is an incredibly fun, kind of cozy sci-fi. It like has the setting of a space opera, but a feel of a cozy sci-fi book. She was incredibly popular on booktube a couple of years ago now, and all of her books have been really well received. Like I said, this is book four. I've read the other three and freaking loved them. Um, this one is about some kind of three strangers who get stuck at, um, like, on one particular planet. It is a, a planet with civilization, but they have sort of been been stuck in one place um, and they need to try and like find a way to get home. It's about the two, the three of them interacting. Um, so what I really like about Becky Chambers' books is she does really fun, weird space opera stuff with incredibly entertaining different alien species, lots of different like um, social, like playing around with kind of societal expectations in these different um, alien species and um, humans are equally weird and sort of it's at a point where we've been travelling the stars enough that we're very well integrated. Her books always have some kind of queer element to them. There's playing around a lot with like what the, the kind of traditional family unit should look like, playing around with concepts of gender. She does some really fun entertaining stuff. So whilst I don't know for definite that this book has some kind of representation, her whole world has it. So I'd be really amazed if there wasn't something in here um, that made sense for this particular prompt. Then I'm going to talk about the three non-fiction books that I have that are all on kind of a similar topic entirely accidentally. The first book is When Brooklyn Was Queer by Hugh Ryan. This is specifically a look at uh, queer history in America. It's the LGBT uh, history of Brooklyn from early days of Walt Whitman in the 1850s up through the queer women who worked in Brooklyn Navy Yard during World War II and beyond. So um, a really expansive look at one particular uh, geographic area. So I think that this would be a really fun way of kind of having a look at um, sort of history of gay rights and things like that. And I'm definitely going to learn a load more of stuff that I don't currently know too much about. The next book is more of a memoir and it is Gay Bar Why We Went Out by Jeremy Atherton Lynn. This is um, a gentleman who is mixed race and it is about his experiences in the gay community, especially the gay nightclub community. So it's a look at uh, Los Angeles, did it say Los Angeles? It's Los Angeles, London and San Francisco. It is also a look at the AIDS epidemic and how that impacted and changed um, sort of gay clubbing community and the incredibly sex positive um, sort of experiences around the gay community and kind of what that meant for somebody who was on the inside. So I do think this is gonna be really interesting as read. It is a world I clearly know nothing about beyond the bits I've read in other books and it's not a world that I would ever get involved in. So I think this is gonna be a really fun peek behind the curtain and just sort of see um, how gay nightclub and kind of gay going out culture really influenced um, a, a particular subsection of marginalised people and also how his mixed race status um, sort of impacted his experiences within that. It's something which like when I read um, And the Band Played On which is about the AIDS epidemic it did talk about it a little bit and it's come up in podcasts I've listened to before which I think is where I heard about this one. I think that it was mentioned on a podcast as a like good memoir to read if you were interested in this area so I think it'd be good fun. And then sort of on a similar thing I have Fire Island A Queer History by uh, Jack Parlett and this is specifically about a slim strip of land off the coast of New York a place of hedonism reinvention and liberation and again this idea of finding specific geographic areas um, whether it be nightclubs or this specific kind of strip of land and making them into some kind of sort of uh, mecca a, a 
a place to go to be safe kind of thing um so i think again this one will be very interesting and it'll be fun to see how much crossover there is between the two of them because i don't know what specific time periods either of them are going to be focusing on more um so yeah very very interesting fire island is not something that i know much about at all this was like a found in a charity shop kind of book um so i think that this will be fun to fill in some knowledge about specific kind of like i say like places that, that drew people from marginalised groups and sort of places to be able to call home found family kind of energy. So those are sort of the books that I'm reading with uh, Pride Month kind of in mind and then let's have a little look at some of the uh, yearly TBR books that I will be pulling from as well. I'm going to be hopefully trying to get to Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now I've not actually read any of Charlotte's work but I have finished off the other two sisters Emily and Anne and read all of their back catalogue so I figure it's about time that I finally tick Charlotte off the list. This is her biggest most well-known one and it's about Jane and Mr Rochester and the mad wife he has in the attic. Uh, I'm probably going to be doing this on audiobook if I hadn't said that already um, because it's a little bit chunky and I don't actually have many audiobook picks for June so I think this is going to be the one that I go for first but I'm really looking forward to this because I've loved all the other Bronte Brontes and I'm kind of in the mood for a bit of a weird gothic-y kind of book. And then from my Around the World in 12 Nonfiction I'm going to uh, start and finish City on Fire The Fight for Hong Kong by Anthony uh, Dalpiran. This is specifically a look at protests that happened in 2019 so it's not strictly world history but it's sort of world events that I don't know about and hey they were five years ago and I'm assuming it's going to talk about the run-up to it and the reasons why this occurred and I will learn a bit about more of Hong Kong's history in general. Um, I will link down below the video for Around the World and 12 Nonfiction if you've not watched it already um, but I'm just trying to broaden my horizons for what countries I read about because there's definitely a bit of a British focus going on so I'm intrigued and excited to get to this one. And then I'm going to start but I'm probably not going to finish in June let's be honest. I think this one's going to drift for a little while. Uh, Jonathan Miles' St. Petersburg, Three Centuries of Murderous Desire. The cover of this is freaking stunning. So this is a look at Russian history, specifically focused on the city of St. Petersburg. And I think this could be a really interesting way of learning more about Russia in general. I have read not an insignificant number of Russian history books. So it's something which I do feel a little bit more versed in than some of the other areas in the world, but it's a big place and a lot happened. So I think it's gonna be fun to re-go over some ground that I am familiar with, but not confident in, in one specific location and see how things have changed over the years within that location. So we're going to be covering one at St. Petersburg, Petrograd, Leningrad, and then once again St. Petersburg. So I think it's starting in the 1700s and then going forward to more modern day. So I think it's going to be good, but it is freaking huge and I can't find it on audiobook, which is kind of how I prefer to take on chunky non-fiction books. So we're just going to have to put up with it in fiction form, get a bit of a wrist workout and slowly but surely wade through that one. So, there you have it. Those are the books that I'm going to be hopefully tackling in June. Do let me know in the comments down below, have you read any of these? And if so, what your thoughts were? And are you doing anything specific in your reading for Pride Month? What is sort of your energy there? Um, it's not something that I've ever really picked up on in the past, I think. But, you know, I thought this year I've got kind of an accidental clumping of gay history books and I thought it'd be fun to read them all together at one point just to kind of get a real immersion into a world that I know not a crazy amount about. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.